G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue our BBL preview series where I'm going through each individual team and trying to profile them, giving you a little update as to what their squad looks like, uh, their ins and outs, their availability issues they might be facing, and I've had a crack at plotting a best 11 as well for each team, and then finally giving you a bit of a preview as to what I think will happen with each respective team. So up to this point, I've done the Perth Scorchers, I've done Ma uh, Melbourne Renegades, I have done the Brisbane Heat, and I've done the Melbourne Stars, and today we are doing the Sydney Thunder. Before I get into it, if you could do me a favor and consider subscribing to the channel if you want uh, both cricket content this summer and of course AFL content through the year that is our speciality but we are going to be covering the uh, BBL uh, throughout the entire season and uh, probably going to be live streaming the first game of the year as well and then we'll see what happens after that but anyway let's talk about the Sydney Thunder a team that came fourth last year with an even ledger of seven wins and seven losses and unfortunately got eliminated by the Brisbane Heat uh, in a Duckworth Lewis affected game. In terms of their best performances, Ollie Davies was actually their top run scorer, I believe, with a fairly modest average of 27. That was kind of a feature of uh, their, their batting last year. There wasn't a whole lot of um, individuals making big runs, but Hales was the only batsman that averaged over 30. Their bowling by comparison looked a little bit more potent. They've got Daniel Sams uh, as a all-rounder. He was their leading wicket taker last year. But uh, the general mix of guys like McAndrew, who's having a good Sheffield Shield season, uh, Garinda Sandu, and for rookie, they were all dangerous with the ball. So let's talk about the ins and outs for their squad. First of all, I'll put the squad up on the screen. Uh, I did post this the other day. But uh, again, these might be subject to change still. And I think I've got everyone there. I think they've signed a couple of other young players, which I'll mention in a moment. But uh, in terms of their ins, Cam Bancroft is the headline recruit, you would say, from the Perth Scorchers after a terrific season. Zaman Khan, I think, is a quick from Pakistan. Liam Hatchett joins from the Melbourne Stars. And uh, the two youngsters that they've signed to their squad, I believe, are Will Salzman and Liam Dodrell, who are both all-rounders, uh, which might not have come up on the screen there because it's all... You know, it's all over the place, the updating. In terms of the players they lost, well, there's Brendan Doggett, who joined the Adelaide Strikers. They lost Joel Davies to the Sydney Sixers. Sam Whiteman goes back to the Perth Scorchers there. Riley Rousseau is not playing. Fuzzle Hark for Rookie. Um, this was actually a fairly big loss. He won't be playing for the uh, Thunder in this tournament. Uh, his economy rate in particular was really good last year. Usman Kadir as well, and uh, Ben Cutting. So obviously this squad boasts, uh, you know, a veteran gun like David Warner in his team, but he will be away on test duty. Uh, but apparently after this SCG test, presumably he will be back, which I think is going to be round seven or eight of this BBL tournament. Uh, but they've also got to consider Bancroft. They're their big recruit from the Scorchers who is having such a good Sheffield Shield season that he's a chance to be picked in the squad for the Pakistan test series, in which case he won't be available, which would be a blow. Alternatively, I also read that Alex Hales, Daniel Sams and Zaman Khan are all contracted to um, the Abu Dhabi T10 League which I recently found out was a real thing. Uh, but apparently that goes until December 9th and uh, the Thunder don't play until December 12th. So they should be all sweet. So with that all in mind, I've had a crack at their best 11. Again, it's a little bit tricky, uh, but let's go with this. Matthew Gilks opens the batting as their wicketkeeper with Alex Hales. I have put Bancroft in here because there's a chance he'll be there, uh, but obviously it remains to be seen. I did leave David Warner out because he's pretty much almost certain not to going to be there until the second half. Uh, definitely certain, actually. Ollie Davies, Alex Ross, Daniel Sams is the all-rounder. Their captain, Chris Green, is the sort of uh, bats at seven all-rounder, even though he's more of a bowler. Uh, the bowling attack, I think, is quite strong with McAndrew, Sandu, Zaman Khan, and Tanvir Sanga as well. So a couple of spin options for them, a bit of balance, and in particular, Sanga uh, was pretty reasonable, I thought, in tough conditions in India in the most recent T20 series. So in terms of what I like about that team, other than Alex Hales, again, I think the batting lineup might be a bit of a vulnerability for them. I don't think it looks particularly strong. The thing is, though, Alex Hales is an unbelievable player on his day and really hard to stop. So in a shorter format, he could still, uh, he could still be really impactful. The next batsman is probably Jason Sanger. Um, you know, he looks like a decent prospect, but Pretty uncapped and hasn't really set the world on fire at BBL just yet, but it is early days, of course. Ross and Davies had decent tournaments last year, but you know someone like a Daniel Sams, who I've got batting at six in this scenario, he averaged less than 10 last year with the bat, despite batting in 11 innings. So obviously that's just a bad season, but uh, that for me is where the weakness is. But I will say that their bowling attack does look pretty strong. So in terms of you know trying to predict where we might see the Sydney Thunder fall this year, they were fourth last year. I think probably around the mix again for that same spot. I don't think from the squad depth that I've seen here, they're up there with um, the Scorchers and the Renegades who I've already previewed so far, but I think they're better than some of the weaker teams in the Strikers and, and Stars purely on squad depth. 
I think this bowling attack could cause some damage. They've got some really good individuals in this team. Um, and as a bowling mix, I think they could be dangerous. And it only takes Alex Hales to have a huge tournament for this to uh, this completely change. So I'll say they're probably a good shout for third or fourth. Um, fifth is also possible. That's probably the range I see this. But it is short format cricket, which makes it even harder to predict than anything else. So that's what I got for you in this video, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below, what you agree with, disagree with, um, something I might have missed. And also, you know, offer a prediction of where you think the Thunder will finish in this tournament. But for now, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.